Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Destiny 2. I played it on the PS4, it's also available on the Xbox One and PC. Okay, so let's jump into the story. Firstly, Destiny 2 has a real story. The first Destiny didn't really have much of one, and I've gotta admit, that wasn't a huge problem for me, I just enjoyed playing the game. And I will say that Destiny 2 has way more story. I will not agree with what some of the people in the marketing department of Destiny had to say about Destiny 2. Claiming that there was gonna be so much story, you were gonna be sick of the story? Nah, not even close to that much story. The reality of it is, there's a decent story. It's nothing that hasn't been seen before. It's just painted with the Destiny world colors. All the themes in this game have been seen dozens of times in movies, other video games, and so it's a little trite, but it's not necessarily bad either. Their claim that there's so much story you will be sick of it is a complete load of shit, because to put it simply, it's still a pretty short game, even with all the cutscenes and story that they've added. It didn't take me as long as I was expecting based on all their posturing of how big and impressive the story was going to be. On top of that, it suffers from what I like to call the Memorpica Paradox, which is basically the concept of an MMO and an RPG coming together and there's almost always story issues. Specifically, those story issues are that the story treats you like you're just a regular RPG character, you're the only one who can save the world, it's all on your shoulders, and only your shoulders. But then it runs into the problem of being an MMO, and at the same time you are either collecting or turning in a quest, there's about a dozen other people doing it at the exact same time. So that's always something that's never really worked for me, and I've got to say it's kind of a knock against this game. As much as the story was not that amazing, it was good enough. But then you run into that problem where you're sitting there talking to this person who's claiming you're the only person who's gotten your light back. And therefore, you're the only one who can do this when there's dozens of other guardians with their light running around that main social area. Okay, so I focused on that a lot. The story is basically a guy named Gaul who is of the Cabal comes down and he basically captures the speaker and the traveler and he basically steals the light from all the guardians and tries to kill you. You somehow survive and you're ghost somehow survives, and it's the story of you A, regaining your light, and B, fighting back against Gaul. So that basically sums up the story onto the audio. The voiceover work is great in this game. They've got the original cast for Zavala, Ikora, and Cade 6 back, which is great because, let's face it, they were kind of wasted in the first game. I'm glad they're back in this game so that they can really breathe life into those characters. It's not just them. All the voice actors do an excellent job, but otherwise, the sound effects are excellent in this game. I think they do a very good job at making you feel like this world is a very future world. Clearly a lot of the tech is based on some older stuff. I mean a lot of the assault rifles and like scout rifles are clearly based on AK-47s and they feel it and they look it and they sound it and I like that. The music because they actually have a story and you need music to accentuate the story, it is very good. I was really impressed with the music. I really enjoyed the music in this game. Gameplay, as I've said, it's a Memorpiga, so there is a social element if you want to, but it is overall soloable. To put it simply, nothing is too new in this. It's a lot of the same stuff. You go, you get your mission, you go do your mission, your mission ends, you can wander around the zones, find other smaller things to do. I guess the newest stuff they added would be like the loot caves, essentially. They've still got the public events, which can be problematic. They've got the strikes, they've got the raids. I didn't really get a chance to do the raid, but I did the strikes a few times, and I enjoyed them. They even added story to those. And in reality, I will say, they did add a lot more story, but it's minor stuff that doesn't really affect anything. You can do the patrols, you can do the challenges, you can do the crucible, which is the PvP mode. And I do think they did a better job balancing that than they did in the original. I mean... I didn't get to do a lot of high-level PvP, so maybe it's horrendous at that point, but when I played it, I actually enjoyed it. I will say, gameplay-wise, one thing that was kind of really annoying, actually, not just kind of, it was really annoying, was you do not get the Sparrow until you've ended the game. Until you've beaten the main story, you don't get the Sparrow, and that sucks. Because you have to travel some pretty decent distances in this game at times, and... 
it's kind of a waste because you're focused on the mission, yet you have to travel from one end of the map to the other, and there's not a lot in between besides random enemies. Anyone who watched my review of the beta is aware that I complained about the powers and the recharge time on those, as well as the damage that they did, and I've got to say that is definitely fixed in the actual game. The grenades actually kill things, which is obviously a huge thing because when you're hucking a grenade and waiting two minutes for it to recharge and it doesn't kill anything, it's kind of a waste of time. That does not happen now. As for the controls, Bungie has been making first person shooters for a very long time. They have it locked down. They are the first who made a really solid first person shooter on the consoles. So it's not a surprise that generations later, the controls are still fantastic. Okay, so lastly, the graphics. It's a good looking game. It's way better than the first, which isn't surprising because the first was made to be both an Xbox 360, PS3 generation game, as well as PS4, Xbox One. Games like that almost never have the best graphics, and that was true of the original, although it did look good. This looks way better. It definitely looks like a next gen game. I enjoy the character design. I enjoy the world design. I just... I like the overall art style of this game, and I think the graphics brought it to life very well. So to wrap this up, if you enjoyed the first Destiny, you're going to enjoy this one, but that having been said, they needed to add more overall. While there is finally a story, the game itself isn't that much longer than the original, and while there is obviously endgame stuff and PvP, and that's all well and good, when you're playing something that's RPG based, it should be a much longer game. If you're looking for a good shooter right now, though, Though, and you're not looking for like Call of Duty or Wolfenstein, this is a great shooter. It is fun. I will definitely be playing it down the road. But that also having been said, if you played the first Destiny and weren't in love, this isn't going to be a game that makes you fall in love with Destiny. Okay, so in the comments below, why don't you let me know Titan, Warlock, or Hunter, and what subclass? And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share or subscribe. Have a good one.